When using Find My Past, you have to learn to use the card catalog. Today, we're going to talk about how to use the card catalog to find even more searchable databases hiding below the surface. Howdy, I'm Devin Noel Lee with Family History Fanatics, where we help you understand your DNA, climb your family tree, and write your ancestor stories along the way. And today, we're going to talk about climbing our family tree by diving into the card catalog on Find My Past to find super cool searchable databases that you might not have considered by using the main search form. Now here we are over on Find My Past, and I'm going to go to Search, and I'm going to go to A to Z Record Set. Now the next thing I'm going to do on Find My Past is I am going to filter down to Canada and then I'm going to filter down to Ontario. Now I really love this card catalog over here on Find My Past because I can sort these collections in many ways. The default is a sort by title, but I can also sort by category, and this enables me then to see all of the collections from the military uh, conflicts, from the census records, from church religion, and all of them grouped together. And I can also do, then do subcategories. And this is pretty handy because now I have the civil births, the civil death, uh, deaths and burials, and directories and almanacs, which I love city directories, no matter what country they're from. So take advantage of using these little um, sort by collection tools that are really unique to find my past. So I have found a number of collections that are searchable here on find my past. The way I found it to be honest was to scroll down page by page, looking at the catalog and thinking, would that be applicable to my ancestor who's living in that time and place. So the catalog, you're not searching for your ancestors' names yet. You're searching for collections they may lead you to uh, your ancestor in that collection. So I found this collection called the Lavelle's Canadian Dominion Directory of 1871. It says it's a newspaper directory, so it's a postal and telephone directory, kind of like a city directory. Let's dive in. I can go to a specific page number to browse this collection, um, which I highly recommend you do once you find your ancestor's name within the collection. This helps you become familiar with what kind of content is within this book. To navigate, it's a little bit tricky. Um, the navigation, I. Uh, advanced page forward and back is up here with previous so I can go to the previous image and now I can read this uh, Dominion directory information zoom in it says abbreviations used um, and gives you a little bit of information about this so be sure to always kind of flip through your pages if you want to go to the next page you click next up there and it will advance a page um, your zoom in is right here on the screen and zoom out right there. If you want to download a particular page, you could do that. And if you want to print it, you can as well. I'm going to look for some ancestors who name, whose last name is Mar to see what pops up. There are 14 results. And I can go through and I can scroll through this Dominion directory. So now I'm going to go ahead and look to see if I can find Ellen Marr in this directory. There I found her right there. Ellen Marr, widow of John, she is a dressmaker. Now, unlike a city directory, I don't see her address, but I can get a clue as to where she's from because it says, says Broham. It gives me a little bit of background about the actual town and its size and things of that nature. So it's kind of nice to look here and then I can see who else is living around her based on them being listed in this town as well. So that's a really good collection that you can use to find specific individuals in your family. So let's check out another one. 
So this collection is called the, uh, it's for Ontario. It's the Rural Directory for Electoral District of Lincoln. I don't know if I said that all right. <laughs> in January 1929. So election rolls are helpful in putting your ancestors in a specific place and time. And I was able to come in and find this entry for, and it's hard to read, but it was, it's, it's a great find for W.R. Woodland, a laborer, and he is in Beamsville, Ontario. So this is an entire collection full of people in specific places and times, their occupation, and where they lived and were able to, to vote. There's some other um, keys that you'll want to pay attention to because they can give you more biographical information. So when you're in that A to Z catalog, if you see electoral district, that is a record collection you'll definitely want to explore for your ancestors. So military conflict records are great in finding the men in your family tree and the conflicts that they were engaged with. So here is another example. This is the Cameron Rolls. Now on this Rolls, I can see um, individuals that were listed in particular units that they were discharged, that they're dead, that they joined Captain Her uh, Howard's um, unit. Um, this is kind of nice for John, subject to convulsive fits and discharged. So you can find a lot of great information here as well as pay attention to those footnotes at the bottom. You will want to, when you find your um, relative on these records, You'll then want to scroll forward or back a few pages to see if you can find out some more of the unit histories and the creation of the records so you really know what you're looking at rather than just, hey, I found them in this record. Now, passenger lists are records that you'll want to explore. They may not be specific to uh, your, the place you're researching, in this case, Ontario, but they may have your ancestors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Go type the destination port city as Canada. And we have a list of individuals where their names weren't located, uh, uh, the names weren't listed, but their birth year um, or the destination port was. So I'm gonna add a last name. So now I have the filtered down to a last name in the port of Canada, and I can then go and view in some images for some individuals um, who came to Canada. So I'm going to go ahead and explore one of the records for this one's for Gladys and there she is and we can find out the information about her arriving that she's bringing some children, her address in the UK, that's awesome, um, and the address of where she's going to and then we can look at the top of this record and it says Canadians Wives Bureau. Now click on view transcript and you're gonna find something really cool. Find my pass will then allow you to add this to your tree, but it'll also see if they have found another record for you that you can then go explore. People with the same last name on this voyage. So it goes and looks through the whole voyage, uh, the whole passenger list to see if there's someone else. Now we knew Betty was there. Uh, because she was listed in the same line, but what if there were five or more other people traveling with her? So that's a really cool record to explore on Find My Past, and you'll find that by going to the card catalog, searching your, for your locality, and it will not only pick things specific to, in this case, Ontario, but anything in the larger sphere that would apply, such as arrivals from the UK to Canada, which would eventually go to Ontario, perhaps. Now the final collection I didn't even know existed and that's why you go to the card catalog and do a location search. This is for the Odd Fellows Life Insurance Application Collection that's available on Find My Path. In this record collection, I can see so many wonderful details about the applicant, their name, their age, um, their places of residence, their marital status, um, step of the injuries they may have had, whether they ha are caught up with their um, immunization, 
But even though this doesn't necessarily name the father, the um, father's parents, the mother, the mayor's parents, the brothers and the sisters, but look at this biographical information that you can find. You can find out that in the date, uh, on the date that this record was created, Levi's father was living, his mother was living, his mother's parents were living, but his um, mother, his father's parents were deceased and the reasons why and the age at which they died. That can help you support your life event facts of when did an ancestor die and what did they die of. And the same can be said of the uh, brothers and the sisters. You'll also want to um, look at who the beneficiary is. And here, in this case, this was his mother. I have another example I want to show you. This is a record for Charles uh, Shipley. And his record is for Emma Miller, his uh, fianced wife, his fiance. They're not married yet. So, these are more modern records, but you can still figure out that his wife's, his future wife's maiden name is Miller. How cool is that? Plus, you can find all sorts of information. All died of old age. That's his parents and that's his siblings. So I invite you to move beyond that homepage search form on Find My Past, dive into the card catalog, narrow down the options to the locations you're researching anywhere around the world that Find My Past covers, and see what you can find. In the next video, I'm gonna to talk to you about using the card catalog to find social history. Until that video comes out, be sure to check this playlist for more tips and tricks on how to research on Find My Path.